by popular demand, there's a couple of members tonight wanted me to do my update of where PDC started again. I know a few of you have seen it, but uh, people like to hear it again. So Panadol Conservation Incorporated started in October 2000, <coughs> 2003. But obviously started with a passion of mine, being one of the founding members and uh, obviously kicking it off. My passion started around 22 years ago when I joined the zoo industry. And yes, some of these photos are old. Hopefully frog skin and haircuts give it away. But my passion really came about from uh, looking after painted dogs in captivity, seeing possibly over 200 animals bred in captivity, and obviously learning a lot more about their cause. During that time, we obviously perfected ways in which of anaesthetising the dogs and restraint, right through to what we call the frozen zoo. And we have a world expert, Monique Paris, and my brain tonight down in the front corner as well. So we were the first people to successfully gather semen from a male wild dog or painted dog, freeze that and have over 70% post thaw motility. What does that mean? It means that we get some sex cells. If this animal does go extinct in the wild, we may have a future of bringing them back. So we worked on that quite successfully, introducing packs together. And then I got an opportunity to go to Zimbabwe to work with a gentleman called Dr. Greg Rasmussen for painted dog conservation. Uh, based in Wangi National Park. I worked with Greg for many, many years, about three or four years before I decided to quit my full-time work, go over there and build the largest rehab centre anywhere in the world for painted dogs. And there we are with the team. This took um, two years of complete work to build an intensive care clinic, rehab centre and a soft release centre, <coughs> along with the education and also stay over area for children. So there we are, proud moment. Quite interesting those who have been to Africa and particularly around Wangi know that there's around 42,000 elephants just in that area so the fence had to be elephant proof as well which is always a challenge. Our first inhabitants, John and Angela, and we didn't name them. But sadly our, obviously our ultimate goal is not to have any animals in this facility but it has had many animals through there. All from painted dogs right through to cheetah and farmers that have been extirpated from their land uh, due to the farm takeovers. So it's been quite an interesting journey and it's still standing the test of time today. Two other animals, Ulaka and Sox, which uh, the rest of their pack died out due to anthrax and the Sarve Conservancy. We raised them through to adulthood and introduced them to other packs and put them back in the wild. We also rescued leopards that were caught in felt fires and we introduced those back um, in, through a sanctuary. Obviously I was able to train some of the keepers in the area uh, due to my zoo experience. Sadly, just to give you an indication, the gentleman in the middle, Xmas or Christmas and Polfu, is the only one of those three alive. The other two have died of AIDS. So we do have quite a high turnover. And um, both anyone that's worked in Africa knows exactly what I'm talking about. We've also been involved with moving confiscated dogs. These two animals were sent to develop cheetah sanctuary in South Africa from Zimbabwe, part of a, what we believe was a trade. So I got to box them up fly them back to uh, Wangi and release them back into the wild. And uh, if anyone sat in a small plane like that with two painted dogs pooing in boxes, you know what I mean. <laughs> Some of the other things, obviously, these are dogs that were dug up out of a den. These were at uh, Chip and Gali Wildlife Orphanage in Zimbabwe in Bulawayo. And uh, Pete Wood here, one of our committee members, also in the photo. We actually moved those animals back to Wangi got them settled into the area and acclimatised and did the world first of ranch reducing dogs which were captive raised in Zimbabwe back onto an island. And why we chose an island is the fact that there's plenty of prey species. We monitor the dogs if we needed to top up their food we could. And then we uh, um, took them off the island about six months later and they successfully reintegrated into the wild. So world first there. And there we are coming off the island with the dogs in the background. We've also lent our hands to hyena research, particularly in the Wangi area. <laughs> and that's Jealous, our tracker. Um, good friend. Obviously, we've also been involved with anti-poaching. We'll speak more about where we're putting our focus now in Zambia. But over the years, um, we've done a lot of anti-poaching in Zimbabwe and supported that through funds from nights like tonight. And sadly, the people at the end of the chain usually uh, trying to obviously support their families or little, get a little bit of money through bushmeat trade. Sadly, because poaching is so rife and the socio-economic and political climate is so bad in Zimbabwe and most southern African countries, 
snaring and poaching is the plague of Africa and we've had to pick up the pieces a few times and this is probably the worst one we've ever seen. And it had two snares around its neck. One had been on so long that the knot of the wire had um, grown through the trachea and left a huge hole. So anything that it ate or ingested, even water came out through the throat. Lucky though, after four months of rehab, and there we are working on the dog probably every couple of weeks, we're able to release it back to its uh, natal pack, which uh, <laughs> maternal pack, which came back to uh, visit him through the fence line. And as I said, it was a great success story. Not all the stories are successful, and the bush telegraph works quite well, but on this occasion, it didn't. It's indiscriminate, probably the most benign animal you'll ever come across, giraffe. Uh, this animal was so badly sneered it couldn't drink or eat, so the best thing for it was euthanasia, which is quite sad. We've also done a lot of community work over the years and set up pen pal schemes throughout s several of the rural communities and introduced them some, to some new toys. And we've also done clothing appeals through PDC Inc and obviously clothe the community. We then in 2007 spread our wings. Uh, it did become quite difficult to support Zimbabwe uh, through fundraising in Perth and uh, Nicholas and his team know exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of people didn't want to support Zimbabwe even though they're strong followers still. So we spread our wings and got involved with the Wild Dog Project in Namibia, out near Chunkwe in Bushman land, with a gentleman called uh, Mr. Robin Lyons, and many of you are familiar, Robin actually stood in front of a lot of the people here tonight at a function um, three years ago and the year before that as well. Robin is actually having issues with doing what we stated back then was a reintroduction of dogs into Atosha National Park, the premier game park in Namibia. So what we're doing in the downtime is actually working with Dr. Matt Becker now in Zambia, and Matt will tell us more about that in a moment. But with Robin, as I said, out there in our studies we've done in Zimbabwe, the dogs usually have a home range around 350 to 750 square kilometres. Out where Robin works, it's 3,900 square k's. So you have your work cut out for you. It's very interesting the fact that there's low prey density and low numbers of dogs. Dogs are probably the heaviest anywhere in Africa. And some of the dogs weighed over 35 kilos. And obviously working with the bushmen and the challenges. And we supported Robin quite heavily with GPS units and obviously uh, Mr Mike Palmer and SAVE Foundation and PDC Inc. bought Robin a new vehicle, <coughs> cameras and obviously laptops so, and camera lenses. The second field year that we spent with Robin, I actually built a new bush camp for him and I got to dig the toilet. <laughs> After all my years experience, he gave me a great job. And obviously we're out catching dogs and recollaring, so uh, but absolutely massive dogs out there, uh, unlike the Bushmen. About the same time, a lady came to work with me at Western Plains Zoo in the central western New South Wales, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, talking about running a, a dog project in Africa. Um, quite a sweet young lady at the time called Kelly Lee. And uh, she went on to become Dr Kelly Lee and set up the African Wild Dog Conservation Project. And there's Kelly in action. Kelly left some years back and uh, a brilliant scientist moved into a place called Dr Matt Becker, who's with us tonight and set up what we call the Zambian Carnivore Program, which is one of our main focuses at the moment. And there's Matt. You didn't know I had that photo, did you? <laughs> Matt at home in Montana with uh, his best friend. <laughs> and Eagle Drodge, which is a uh, Matt's ecologist, and they're based in the South Luangwa Valley, but I'm not going to talk too much because Matt actually has four bases now. It's one of the biggest dog projects, I think the biggest now, and obviously covering all the carnivores lion, hyena, leopard, cheetah, and dogs. But uh, if you want to go there, obviously there's a auction tonight for uh, accommodation and stay and visit to the parks and everything. Looking over the South Luangwa River here is absolutely spectacular. That's uh, Matt's, obviously, base camp. And um, if you look close, you can see the water level where the river floods constantly up the walls. Some of Matt's uh, spectacular photos from that area of Zambia. Had some very interesting animals. What you get is a geographical isolation with the Rift Valley down one side and the South Luangwa um, cliffs on the other. And this is called a crochet zebra. A little bit different to a virtual zebra with the belly lines go under the, the tummy. We have um, Thornacross giraffe, which is unique to that area. And Matt's actually doing a photographic survey to work out how many they are. A little bit smaller, and obviously the coat patterns are different. 
lots of elephants, but a very different social or age structure due to the fact they're almost poached to extinction in the 80s. They're slowly coming back, so they've got this massive reproduction, reproductive rate at the moment trying to catch up to the carrying capacity that they usually have. So you see a young mum with calves at all different sizes and get pretty close to our camp. And you see that's our camp in the, the base camp. Uh, this is actually in November, December last year when I was over with Matt. Obviously, there is some uh, changes in the, the weather patterns as well in Zambia. Rains don't come as when they usually should, or when they do, they don't get enough. And we're just monitoring animals that are dying age classes through taking the dentition samples and DNA. Obviously, Matt has a big, keen interest in lions, and obviously the issues with hunting, and obviously hunting too many animals so that they won't be there for future generations. And I've shown this before, but no, I don't have my finger in its bottom. There is actually a thermometer on the end. <laughs> We're also keen supporters of the South Wangle Conservation Society run by uh, a lovely lady called Rachel McRobb and through funding we get to pursue, we've actually funded this anti-poaching team here which is the first painted dog exclusive anti-poaching team in Zambia. And there we are out on patrol and as I said you take your hat off to them in the humidity doing about 40 k's every day. And there's Rachel and Ange and I. Obviously poaching is rife there as well and Matt will talk more about that. But uh, this is painted dog foot around the waist, around the foot again. Elephants, it's, it's indiscriminate. And obviously any money we raise is going to try and further our efforts by getting a plane in the air and obviously putting more people on the ground. Lions, hyena, zebra. Chip and Bailey Wildlife uh, Trust is actually an education program set up by Steve and Anna Tolan, two retired police persons from the UK and it's uh, obviously based in the South Wangra Valley as well, where they're taking children from these rural communities, giving them an opportunity to get involved with conservation and not poaching. Obviously, there's not many employment opportunities at all, so we've been supporting the education officer for that facility, um, or we did for the first 12 months, and now we've secured funding for that um, through Perth Zoo itself. There's Anna with some of her babies. And, uh, if anyone knows, it's a lesser bush baby, very, very cute. Um, war talk, and obviously that's the first education officer. There is a new lady there now that we're supporting, but obviously doing tree planting programs and getting them involved. Obviously you need the teachers to stay and the students to stay, so they've tried to improve the accommodation, and that's obviously the girls. Um, two people uh, find to our hearts as well, um, Sid and Sue Chip Chase, which are with us, and I would just like to thank obviously donated this vehicle to Zambian Carnival Program and it, it, is, it has a multifaceted use now, supporting Chip and Bailey, taking kids out into the park, doing errands for the project and obviously running around trying to save the wildlife. It has arrived and we do have a photo in a minute, so thanks to Sid and Sue again for that. Um, thanks to Steve Harrison and Save Foundation with, with us tonight as well which sold us this Holden Rodeo at a bargain basement price. It has also arrived and this is uh, Matt's vehicle to get in between all the four projects to keep everything running. So thanks guys for that as well. <laughs> Obviously a lot of that couldn't be um, achieved without the assistance of uh, a lot of the committee and in particular Tracy and Brian Bernasconi from Backpacker Car Rentals in Fremantle. Um, obviously assist in getting all those vehicles ready, so thanks to those guys as well. <laughs> One of the other things we've done is assist the um, domestic dog vaccination program uh, for Matt to try and eradicate diseases such as the stemper parvovirus and rabies from getting from the domestic dogs to our beloved painted dogs. And obviously trying to keep an eye on them. One of the other things we just got involved with is the African Wildlife Conservation Fund in Save Conservancy with, a, with another um, painted dog researcher called Dr. Rosemary Groom and we've actually supported to the tune of around uh, $7,000 the education um, flyers and that to try and keep her project going. Obviously Amanda Ash, sorry I tried to find the new photo. Uh, <laughs> we'll soon be Dr. Amanda Ash. Um, Amanda's our first PhD student which I supervised and obviously we assisted her with her um, transport and airfares to get into the field in the first year. So congratulations to Amanda for that long journey. We obviously have some uh, great patrons. We haven't seen him for a while. Bigger, larger than life, and I'm sure the ladies would like to see him again. Uh, Bradley Trevor Grieve, uh, who's in Costa Rica at the moment, living and hiding away from the world. And we've had a few great functions with Bradley, bearded and unbearded, and big and small. 
and Bradley recently caught up with the Zim guys in the US at a conservation uh, function as well. Younger. Look at that hair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all round great guy, Tony Park, which we'll hear more about. Obviously last year we had the Delta and um, done well. <coughs> Let's hear it again. We obviously raise all our funds through nights like tonight, so obviously people are always generous in supporting us and obviously Tony will put up, hopefully, we haven't spoken about it yet, a couple of names in his next book. If you want to bid on those, it's always great. I've been in there as a dwarf painted dog researcher. <laughs> Kiwi. Um, we had a patron before Tony called Dr. Luke Hunter, who's now the CEO of Panther, based in New York. We be we get out in our suit occasionally um, and get out amongst the community. We do a lot of work with the riding for the disabled games. So we've got out on the horse and um, work with the disabled kids, giving something back to the community. Been at RSPCA All Paws Walk. Been at the uh, zoos, wildlife conservation days. And we've had some great, obviously, nights of raising funds. And obviously, Mr. Nicholas Duncan, which will be our auctioneer tonight, has been a success of a lot of our auctions. Obviously, you'll see him in action if you haven't seen him before tonight. But we've had some great art auctions and had some really good laughs. We also got involved with the Absolutely 80s. So anyone who's old enough to remember the 80s, um, obviously, Kids in the Kitchen, Scott Kahn there, Ali Fowler from um, Sons and Daughters, but also Shantuzzi, Brian Mannix from Uncanny X-Men, Sean Kelly from The Models. We've had functions with them as well, which have fundraised for us. We've got out to schools and done more community education work. We've set up, obviously, merchandise, which is going well tonight. So thank you for those who bought. If you want something, have a look at the back. Obviously, our memberships, we're on Facebook. We've got our new website. Pack adoptions, life memberships now. As I said, they're smiling. Rick, the very first one. And they're the pack adoption plaques. Uh, thanks to, to Beck Wood, sister Leah Austin. She actually has set up her own pet... Um, pet Shampoo <coughs> range with Picasso, our caricature on there, and thanks to Sue Chip Chase who uh, runs Pet Magic, the largest pet franchise in WA, sells it for us and funds go to us. We launched this last time, but we've just been recently endorsed by Sir Richard Branson, which hopefully will bring great things to us, but not only us, the dogs is the main cause for us. I recently attended the international, well, very first international painted dog conference in Pittsburgh Zoo, and this is obviously. Uh, with the CEO, Dr. Barbara Baker, and also got to meet up with one of the other legends in the dog world, and that's uh, Mr. John Tico McNutt from the Botswana Predator okay. Conservation okay. Project. Now, Dr. Matt Becker holding a chihuahua. We'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> but there you go, there's the Rodeo in Zambia. Matt also called me urgently one night saying that we need another vehicle. Our uh, 4x4 Honda is uh, not, it was giving us grief, so we actually bought that new ag bike in the back. So that's actually gone out in the field, and there it is in action. And uh, Sid and Sue, thank you. There's your vehicle um, all the way from uh, downtown Cannington to Fremantle to Dar es Salaam in Tanzania to Lusaka in Zambia, then to Mfui in South Luangwa. So long journey. That's it. So thank you. Thank you. Well, Sean, I just want to let you know over the last 13 months what we've um, done with a lot of money that obviously the members have helped us raise. To our PDC in, in Zimbabwe, we've given $40,085. To the Zambian Carnivore Program, we've given almost $62,000. And obviously the Lowfelt Dog Project, almost $7,000. And that's just in the last 13 months. So thank you to all for your support.